time for the Abbott and Costello Show. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood tonight for your listening pleasure. So, hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello! <laughs> Costello, come in. Do you realize you're almost late for our broadcast? What kept you? Where have you been? Oh, I was all over town today trying to find myself a new shirt. I had a terrible time. Well, naturally. You know there's a shortage of material. You said it. I finally had to buy one of those shirts made out of onion skin. And did that shirt embarrass me? Oh, now, come. How could an onion skin shirt embarrass you? Well, I walked into the Brown Derby restaurant, and my shirt tail jumped out and waved at the hamburgers. <laughs> My shirt even chased the hamburgers into the icebox. Wait a minute. Your shirt ran into the icebox? What happened? That's all. Now my tail is cold. They all... <laughs> <laughs> Doc, never mind that, Costello. <laughs> Costello, you mean you kept me waiting here all this time while you were out buying a shirt? Oh, yeah, but I had to get one. I met a wonderful girl today, Abby. You did? Her name is Gertrude Jigglewater. Oh. <laughs> She's got a swell job, too, Abbott. What does she do? She scrubs the floor in the house on 92nd Street. <laughs> you mean you've got a date with her? Yeah. You ought to see her. Beautiful. She's Betty Grable, Lana Turner, Lauren Bacall. All rolled in for one. She is? Yeah, but the only trouble is, when I unroll her, she looks like Boris Karloff. <laughs> what are you doing with another girl, Costello? <laughs> well, what about your girlfriend, Lena Gunster? I had a fight with her. No. Yes. Lena sent me to a drugstore last night to get some makeup, but I made a mistake and got her a bottle of leg makeup. Leg makeup? Yep, yep. When she put it on her face, she got a run in her neck. <laughs> Boy, is she mad at me! I uh, don't blame her. You mean your love boat sprung a leak? Sprung a leak. The whole bottom fell out. <laughs> Costello, I think Lena knows, uh, knows about this girlfriend of yours. Yeah, she left this note to you. Yeah, you'd better read it. Okay. Oh, look. Dear Lewis. Look how she spells Lewis. L-O-U-S-E. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Isn't that loud? You're, you're reading right. Maybe it's Luce, French, you know. <laughs> How do you spell Luce? Uh, L-O-U-S-E. It still spells loud, don't it? <laughs> Read Lena's letter, please. Okay. Go ahead. I'll read it. Go ahead. I hear you are running around with another girl. I am coming... Come in over here, and I'm going to shoot you so full of holes, you can button your dress from any angle. <laughs> Lena wouldn't shoot at me. She's a college girl. She told me she came from Penn State. <laughs> she must have meant State Penn. <laughs> you dummy, that was good. It's just a car backfiring. Then help me down off this channel there. <laughs> Costello, if I were you, I'd get out of town right away. Is there any place you can go where Lena can't find you? Yes. My Uncle Artie Seven. He has a monkey ranch. He raises apes. Your uncle raises apes? Yes. Yeah, it's right on his stationery here. Seven apiary. Apiary? Mm-hmm. Why, an open apiary is a place where they raise bees. Have you ever seen your uncle's bees? Oh, sure. He's got a whole herd of bees. No, 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 you dummy. It isn't herd of bees. It's swamp. What? It's swarm. Why don't you take your coat off? No, no, no. <laughs> You've been out to your uncle's farm. Haven't you ever seen his hives? Have I ever seen what? Have you ever seen your uncle's hives? No, every time I've seen him, he had his clothes on. <laughs> Listen, Costello, I've been to your uncle's ranch, and I saw his hives. You saw his hives? Yes. Shame on it! What's the matter? What's the matter with that? Bad boy! What are you... Now, wait a minute. Be careful with your remark. How dare you peep into my uncle's window and look at his hive? I didn't peek in any window. Then you looked over the transfer. Now, listen, you dope. Your uncle was in the house and his hives were in the backyard. He was in the house and his hives were in the backyard? Certainly. How does he scratch him with a long-handled rake? No. <laughs> Talk sense, Costello. I'm talking about your uncle's beehive. 
Haven't you ever tasted his orange blossom, honey? No, I haven't, sweetheart. I... <laughs> Costello, you don't even know You're where... You're cute. Yeah, never mind that. You don't even know where honey comes from. That's ridiculous. A cat... Who don't? You don't. My cat has honey. Now, that's ridiculous. A cat doesn't have any honey. Then why does mine stay out all night? Costello, <laughs> 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 bees make the honey. Haven't you ever seen the bees in my garden gathering nectar? Gathering what? Nectar in the flowers. You next two in the flowers. <laughs> you better be careful, Abbott. I next a girl once in the flowers, and her boyfriend caught me and fractured me in the hollyhock. Uh, <laughs> right down to the root. All right. Will you please pay attention? I'm trying to tell you where the honey comes from. Haven't you ever seen the bees buzzing around my puppies? Your puppies what? My puppies in the garden. Let them stay in the garden. Who cares? No, I'm talking about flowers. Uh, didn't you know I have an oriental puppy? No, sir. I thought he was an American. <laughs> Costello, when I'm talking about a puppy, I'm not talking about a man. Shame on you. Telling me your puppy ain't a man. Listen, the puppy I'm talking about is uh, the one in the backyard, in the bed. Oh, why don't he sleep in the house? Are you afraid of your, your mommy? Now, nah, look, look, look. I'm talking about my wife's flowers. Uh, haven't you ever noticed my wife's petunias? Can I have that again? I... <laughs> I say, haven't you ever noticed my wife's petunias? Ah, oh, Costello, what could be nicer than beautiful flowers on the table? Meat and potatoes? I hey, look, why do I waste time with you? I'm trying to tell you that the bees gather honey from the flowers and they take it to the hives and put it in their combs. They put the honey in their combs? That's right. Doesn't that make their hair sticky? <laughs> Costello, there's only one way to handle a dummy like you. I'm going to take you out to your uncle's ranch and show you how the bees operate. You're not going to get me near any of those bees. What if one of them should back up and sting me? What do you care about a little bee sting? All you have to do is slap a little mud on it and the stingers come out. All I do is slap a little mud on it and the stinger comes right out? That's right. Who's going to hold the bee while I slap the mud on him? Oh, I... Osborne and the orchestra. We'll sing the current swing favorite, waiting for that train to come in. Stebbins Ranch. Yeah, and am I happy? I got out of town before my girlfriend got a hold of me. Ha, ha, ha! Uh, got away from her. Tell me, Costello, why is Lena so mad at you? Well, yesterday she asked me to give her cat a saucer of milk. I took the milk out of the wrong can, and it turned out to be gasoline. You fed the cat gasoline? What happened? It changed its pepper to a pup pup. <laughs> oh, come on, Costello. Let's see if your uncle is home. Hey, look out for that loose board on the porch. Ow! Ow! That board flew up and hit me in the face. It's even more embarrassing on the way out. I... <laughs> Go ahead, knock on the door. What do you want? I want to see my uncle, Artie Stebbins. Well, hereafter, go around to the back stoop. 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 Step. 
<laughs> I wanted to get up to the back step. 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 Stoop. <laughs> One stoop at a time. Okay, go ahead. I'm glad you fellas dropped around. Eh? Will you help me carry this ladder? I gotta get up on the roof. You gotta get up on the roof? What for? <laughs> I'm gonna have one on the house. <laughs> hey, what's going on out there? Why, well, it's my little nephew, Louis Costello and Bud Abbott. Hello, Mr. Stebbins. Hello, Mr. Stebbins. How are you? Come right in, boys. I was just gonna sit down and eat. What was that? I always have a couple of shots before dinner. <laughs> I like to get off a good joke. <laughs> well, get off that one before it hatches. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Stebbins, I brought Costello out here to hide him from his girlfriend. Now, I hope you can put us up. Do you have a nice room with a bath? Not out here. All we have is a room and a path. <laughs> I think I'd better wash my hands before I sit down to eat. Get away from that cow. Is that a cow? I thought it was funny. All that plumbing and no sink. <laughs> Tell you, dummy. Haven't you ever seen a cow before? Are you kidding? I worked once on a dude ranch. It was so classy that even a cow's wore slacks. The cows wore slacks? How did you milk them? I was a pickpocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you later. Don't cackle over it. <laughs> Look, boys, if you're going to stay out here at my ranch, you better get acquainted. Here comes my foreman, Tex Melonhead. Tex, meet Luke Costello, my nephew, and his friend, Bud Abbott. Hi, boys. All right, everybody works on this ranch. Come on, let's get busy. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't come out here to work. I haven't got the time. Oh, you haven't got the time, huh? Get a load of this Costello. He works in pictures. He's on the radio. He makes thousands of dollars a week, and I gotta go out and buy a watch to tell wait him minute, the wait time. Wait a minute, look, Melonhead, I didn't ask you to go out and buy me a watch. Oh. You don't have to buy me a watch. You want me to go out and steal one, huh? Did go I on. Ask you to go out and steal one? Tell him, tell him. That's how I make my living. I'm not a foreman on the ranch. Say it, I'm a crook. I steal. Who's? Look, Melonhead, you never stole anything in your life. Oh, I spent 15 years in Alcatraz for nothing, huh? <laughs> Go on, while you're at it, tell everybody that I shot a cashier in the bank. Oh, I shot a guy. Start a rumor. I oh. didn't start nothing. Say, I shot a man. Go Why ahead. Why should I say you shot a guy? I swear, Melonhead, you never shot the cashier. I missed him, huh? I was good. <laughs> I can't shoot straight. What do you like that? Now, what did I say? What did you say? Yeah. Get a load of him. Doesn't even know what he's saying, and he takes up my time. I should be doing my work, and you keep me standing here. Look, Melonhead, I don't want you to stand here. Go take a walk. Oh, wear out my boots, huh? Okay, then take a ride. Take a bus. Take a streetcar. Go on, take a taxi. What's wrong with the train? I got nothing against trains. <laughs> you wouldn't mention trains, Why huh? should I talk about trains? Now train? he's against the railroad. Stop the train. No more trains. Go to show you. My brother was out of work for 11 years. This morning, he got a little job on the railroad, a brakeman. Now, Costello wants to stop all the trains just to throw my brother out of work. <laughs> Who said anything about your brother not working, Melonhead? Let your brother work. Let him work 365 days a year. Oh, he shouldn't even have one day off. Huh? <laughs> Look, let him not work at all. Son, he don't have to work at all. Now, you want to make a bum out of him? Who wants to make a bum out of him? He can't even have one day off. Let him take the day off. Go ahead. Let him take Thanksgiving Day Thanksgiving off. Thanksgiving Day. The only day he gets double, double overtime, he lays them off. <laughs> Will you forget about your brother? Fine thing. The only brother I got, he wants me to forget him. My brother, the man who introduced me to Marie, my darling little wife. Oh, now you're dragging my wife into the argument. I didn't even mention your wife, Melanie. Oh, you wouldn't mention her. My wife isn't good enough for you to talk about, huh? Go on, tell him, tell him my wife is a miserable, ugly old battle axe. Melonhead, I've seen your wife. Your wife is charming. She's lovable, very affectionate. Oh, so you're the guy. No, I'm not. I am not Come the on, guy. Come on, take off your coat. Fight like a man. Okay, Melonhead, you've got me good and mad now. <laughs> you want to fight, eh? Yes. Well, I'll fight you. You meet me at the pool room at 8 o'clock. I'll trade punches with you. And furthermore, to show you I'm not afraid of you, Melonhead, I'll let you take the first punch. In the alley? No, on the punch board. Five cents a can. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely Connie Haynes. That's for me. 
Isn't it wonderful up here at your Uncle Artie Stebbins Ranch? Oh, Abbott, what a climate it is. Where else can you jump out of bed in the morning and fill your lungs with that fresh California park? Will I? <laughs> <laughs> I'd feel good, Lou. I'd really feel good if it wasn't for one thing. I, I had a terrible nightmare about a flood. All night long I was gasping and fighting for my life against a raging town of water. All around me, there was nothing but water, water, water. That was no dream, Abbott. It wasn't. No, and a stopper come out of your hot water bottle. Right. <laughs> hey, Costello, look out the window. There's your Uncle Artie Stebbins down there feeding the pigs. Uh, let's get out and watch. Not me, Abbott. Those pigs are vicious. Vicious? Yes, sir. I saw a bunch of little pigs chasing a big pig around the pen. They finally threw him on the ground and tried to chew all the buttons off his vest. <laughs> you talk sense, Costello? Tell me something, Abbott. What? Do little pigs have little babies? Oh, of course they have little babies. That's funny. I always thought they had little pigs. I, all right. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Costello? Why all this silly talk? Oh, I guess it's because I got away from Lena Gessler. <laughs> and she can't find me way up here at my uncle's ranch. How can you talk that way against Lena? I think she's different. She has such a cute little button nose. Yes, but why does it have the button on her lower lip? <laughs> Hey, Costello, who's that getting out of that car? That's my old friend, Scotty Brown. Get a load of him, Abbott. He's all dressed up in a cowboy outfit. Hiya, laddie. Hi, Scotty. Hey, coyote and a bro brick. Get a long little doggy. Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, old boy, why, what are you doing up here at the Stebbins Ranch? Well, I heard you laddies were up here, and I came for a horseback ride. Uh, how do you like these nice woolly chaps I'm wearing? <laughs> I made them myself. Woolly chaps? Looks like a suit of long underwear. Well, confidentially, it is. I took a comb and roughed up the fuzz. <laughs> now, turn around, Scotty, and let's see the rest of your outfit. Come on. Hey, hey. pretty snazzy, eh, laddies? Uh, uh, hey. hey, wait a minute, Scotty. You've only got one spur. Did you lose the other one? No, I only bought one. If you spur one side of the horse, the other side has got to go, too. <laughs> Oh, uh, by the way, Costello, I brought a friend of yours up in my car. Here she comes now. There you are, you sorry tank for the fat salvation. Oh, 
Johnny Costello Selena. Run for the hills and hide the <laughs> Costello, what's this I hear about you running around with another girl named Gertrude Gigglewater? Are you the kind that has to have a lot of women in your life? No, I like a lot of life in my women. <laughs> After all, Lena, I'm the kind of fella that has to have excitement. I have to live. Why? Lena, can I help it if women are crazy about me? It must be the Van Johnson in me. How dare you compare yourself with Van Johnson? I look exactly like him. Where? Between the fingers. Oh. <laughs> Costello. <laughs> Costello, please. Why, why don't you tell Lena that you've been a bad boy and throw yourself on her mercy? Yeah, she'll throw me right back on mine. I'll say I would, you dehydrated Andy Devine. I hear you even held this girl's hand. Oh, that was kid stuff. And you also put your arms around her. That was just kid stuff. Then you kissed her. Today, I am a man. <laughs> well, I'll fix you, Costello. I'm going to take your engagement ring off my finger and throw it away. Lena, Lena, please don't throw that diamond ring on the ground. Why not? Because you'll have seven years bad luck. <laughs> I'm not going to waste any more time on you. I brought my cousin, Cliff Nazaro, out here from Brooklyn. Come here, Cliff. This is the puffed-up angleworm that trifled with my affection. Oh, oh Costello. You're the guy that's been kicking my cousin Lena around. Yeah. Dragging her all the way out here from Brooklyn and then taking a... making a fool out of her. Do you realize that you've broken this little girl's little fabric separate for her? And you, and, and you took a tender little cap and rotor right to pieces and put them right to the pauper's little beast. And you tore it to pieces, and finally you tramped all over the cap and reeds to put the tender little hip and step her back on I have done a lot of things in my life, but I never did that. <laughs> now try to kid me, Costello. I was in the living room the night you took Lena in your arms, and you put little fat rings to stop it right the <laughs> and not only did you cap it for the with bed, but you put the cap and free yourself with a maybe for the cap and for the bed. Go on, tell him, Clippy. You took the words right out of my mouth. You ought to be glad to get rid of them. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Costello? Why do you take everything this man says and twist it? Twist it? I can't even untwist it. <laughs> what are you talking about, Costello? After all, I just told you I saw you take Lena. And you put your arm around her little camera orbit parts, then you cover references. Not the merit, but you put the kind of references over the little orbit parts, and then orbit spent your camera up and never three was three and And that's that plain unfarnished proof. Unfarnished? You sound like you're shellac. <laughs> there you go, insulting the man. I can't understand you, Costello. You can't understand me. Well, listen to him. Now, where do we go? Left it here. You realize that I got up out of a sick bed to come out here? There I was lying there with a cabin rope of rubber celebrant. And on top of it, I had a severe case of family freedom for the hidden step of the Why didn't you try tennis sliding fragrance to the Listen to that, Smith Clippy, trying to confuse you with double talk. <laughs> Costello, don't you know the king's English? Yes, and I'd like to be talking to him right now. <laughs> Listen, Lita, this Costello is no good. I'm going to get you a lawyer, and we'll sue him for crappers, back to sleeper bees, fold a crapper, cover, cover, the border, bend the back, and leave a little fiber and rubber cover for us on the And I'll do it, too. And Costello, he means every word of it. Uh, look, Costello, I realize that I, that I lost my head. And if you'll just apologize to Lena, I'm willing to forgive you because, as Benjamin Franklin said, he who makes his force with the red and red appendix for himself, Shall always be the fat with fresh with the make it sober, 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 Gee, that's what an education will do for you. Well, Castello, what are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry for what I did. I've been a fool. A cad, especially to you and Lena. And there's only one thing I can do to redeem myself. I'm going right out to the corner of Hollywood and Vine. I'm going to climb up on a soapbox in front of all my friends, in front of the whole public. I'm going to stand there and I'm going to ruble punk and blind. Oh, no, not that. Anything but that. Oh, let me out of here. It's a <laughs>